Okay, been asked how to make this uh, basic fire pump and auto sprink. <clears throat> so I've got a client that's looking for an 8 by 8 pump, um, 20 and a half inches in the A dimensions here. Here's the pump curve that I've been given. So we just want to go to tools. I've got a button for this, but you can just start out here. Tools pump. This is just going to be a generic pump. I want an 8 by 8 pump. So now I want to go to pump fitting and I've got to change my takeouts for my pump. So the total from center to end is 20.5 inches. So I need these dimensions here to be half of that. There, and then my distance along center line is gonna be half of that. I have no lateral offset and no vertical offset, so I make those be zero. This is gonna be the same thing again. This is just the other side. So the first one's my suction side. This is my discharge side. This one takeout here, be very careful. This is a negative number. Um, my lateral offsets again are zero. Uh, my lateral and vertical is I've got a vertical inline, so they are right in line with each other. There's no horizontal offset here. There's no vertical offset here. Now I can check and make sure that my pumps have the right dimensions. I'm just going to throw a flange on here. Um, makes it easier to dimension to when I have a flange. So if I put my flange here, this was 20 and a half inches. So each side from, from center to there was 20 and a half. So if I, my total overall should be 41 inches, which is three foot five. And there's your dimension of three foot five. So now, now we need to create the pump curve. So I'm going to go there. I hit my properties button and now I need to edit my pump curve. So I'm going to remove this. This particular pump is a 1250. So I've got 80, 85, 87 <clears throat> at churn, which is zero. Then let's come here, let's go to 900. I've got roughly 85 at 900. So I hit 85, 900. Here's my 1250 point. I'm actually getting 80, about 83. So let's hit 83, <clears throat> 83 at 1250. We'll mark this as the pump rating. Hit OK. And uh, 1250 at 150% is 1875. So here's my line here. This is 80, 75, 70. So I'm about 73 at 1875. So I want to select my pump, hit my properties again. I accidentally cleared out of it. Hit add 73. Oops. <clears throat> at 1875 and hit OK. <clears throat> this is now my pump. So now my pump is set that the dimensions match, the flow curves match, everything's all good. If I want to draw a pipe to it and from it, here's my pipe here. There's on the supply side, there's on the discharge side. I can add my gate valve if I want. I'll take this flange and move it right now. <clears throat> we can add this. I can put a OSNY Take a flange, drop an 8-inch OSNY right here, boom, just like that. Clean up the intersections there. There's that cleaned up. Now I can put my flange back here. I've got a flange here. I can come in and I can put my check valve. Heck, we'll make it a Victolic check valve. Why not? See if they have one. Um, an 8-inch check. There's that. Put this here, snap this on here, touch the pipe, do cleanup intersections. There it is there. I can throw my uh, coupling in place. There you go. There's that. You know, you, you can do whatever you need on suction and discharge side of the pump. Now this pump is working. One of the things in auto sprink you need to remember is that if you want the pump only, so let's say that I'm not going to figure in any city supply for some reason, you need to have nothing connected on the supply side of the pump. So I just move it like a half an inch off. <clears throat> now there's a gap, nothing's connected. And now it would serve um, as the pump being the only source. If I have an actual water supply on the end, then I put my supply bubble here or wherever it's at and you're all good to go. There's how you make the pump.